All right, so we have our 70s model Massey Ferguson sickle bar out and ready to go. And we've got some pretty nice third cutting here. This was uh, kind of unexpected because it's been so dry this year. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't sure I was going to get a third cutting. Uh, last year I actually got a fourth cutting off this field. But uh, this is mostly alfalfa that's uh, come back up here. Usually the second and third cuttings are mostly alfalfa um, in this particular field. And uh, what a huge asset these hay fields have been to us. If there's one piece of advice I could give you if you're looking to buy a homestead or a farm or any good sized piece of property, you know, 10 acres or above, look for something that has some established fields. Um, if you can plant hay or if they already have hay fields, it's a huge resource for us. Uh, every year we, we harvest the hay off this field. We get, you know, anywhere from 600 to 1,000 bales of hay. Uh, that translates into about a thousand dollars, eight hundred to a thousand dollars in hay sales, and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of animals. Uh, this hay supports our pigs and our goats uh, for all of the the year that there's no grass on the ground. So this hay is really where uh, you know the sustainable operation here kind of starts. This is a, a really important to us, uh, and so this was the first thing I did when we moved in here. Uh, we started looking at equipment to uh, get us started with hay. So if you're not familiar with the the hay process, this is step one. Uh, we're going to cut the fields and then we'll let this hay dry out here on the ground. We'll rake it into rows and then we'll bale it. So this piece of equipment is not used much anymore. Uh, most people use hay binds. Hay binds are a little more expensive uh, to get started in and they also make this process a little bit easier. So the sickle bar uh, just cuts the hay uh, at the stems so you can set the depth here uh, within a, a couple inches here you've got an adjustment uh, on the shoes on each side so you can set the height of the of the teeth and that just cuts it and it lays it down so it doesn't crimp the stem so what hay bind does is actually smash it smashes the stems and it actually helps it dry quite a bit quicker however some people including myself feel that the hay bind actually smashes a lot of the nutrients out of the hay uh, and we want to keep this alfalfa especially as intact as possible so when you look at this alfalfa um, this is a very nutrient rich plant actually but uh, most of the nutrients are in the leaves they're not in the stems so once this dries out these leaves become very fragile and the more you smash them and rake them and, and use tetters and other types of things that thrashes things all around, what you end up with is this. And that's what most of your hay ends up being. Now, of course, you get some of the leaves in there, but you lose probably 50% of the leaves. And so the more gentle you can care for the hay, the more of this that you can get in there. And this makes very, very good hay, very nutritious, very healthy, um, nutrient rich hay for the animals, especially the goats and pigs. They need a lot of uh, a lot of nutrients throughout the winter time. So let's get started. First thing I always do when I get this out is I grease everything up. I oil everything up. I've actually learned to put oil right on the pitman arm. I try to keep that oiled because I've had those, those break. Usually every year I break one of these uh, and so when they start to dry out they get fragile and, and they'll break. Uh, it's meant to break. Uh, it's, a, it's a piece that is replaceable but uh, it shouldn't break every year. So keeping the oil on there has helped these last longer for me. Also, uh, I grease every fitting up. Uh, I put oil all along all of the teeth and make sure that is, is all greased up. Unfortunately, I've had to store this outside and so I've got a little bit of rust on it. Uh, but everything's oiled up and ready to go. Now I need to make some adjustments. So there's a couple adjustments that you can make on this. Uh, so the first thing I'm gonna do is get my pitch set right. So right now you can see it's pointed way, way, way up. The whole thing is, you can see the, the whole thing. That, I like it to be pointed up. I don't want it pointed down on the ground. I'm gonna be catching the teeth in the dirt. So I want it to be just above flat, maybe maybe five or 10 degrees off of flat. And that'll help, uh, help this thing roll along the ground and slide along the ground uh, easier. And it also helps to shed the cut grass off of the teeth, which is the biggest problem with this thing. So after I get that adjustment done, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust this piece of equipment from side to side. So I'm going to use the uh, adjustment on the uh, right hand side there of the of the three point and we're going to be able to move this carriage down just a little bit like this. And the idea behind that from what I found is you want to keep this 
off the ground, but you want the sickle bar to touch the ground um, first. So as you lower the three point, you want this bar to get on the ground, but you don't want this dragging in, in the grass because what happens is you'll get, well, number one, you'll break your pitman arm because you'll be dragging that through a bunch of hay and it puts all stress on it. But you're also dragging these belts and other things on the ground, which you don't want to do. One of the first things I learned was how important this little piece of metal is right here. I didn't have this set up originally uh, last year when I first started using the sickle bar properly and I had that actually stuck up in the air. Um, this is meant to ride right on the ground. You see it's got a, a little kind of a shoe ski there um, and then it's got this piece of metal and this helps for your longer grass. So if you have real tall grass it's, it kicks it in. So what this does is it's going to clear a path as you cut. The cut grass is falling over the sickle bar right here and this is pushing it over. And so it ends up leaving a path about from here to here. It's about a foot wide that does not have any gra cut grass in it. So it's a clear patch um, all the way down the field. And then the next pass that you make, you're going to set this shoe right in that clear path so that that way you don't get any cut grass stuck in these teeth. You can't run this sickle bar over any cut grass. Once, it, once you run it over grass that's laying in the field, it's just going to clog those teeth up and then you're going to have to stop. You have to shake it out and you're going to have to start again. All right, let's get out and cut some hay. Uh, I will say that uh, no matter how good you are at running this sickle bar, uh, there is some times when you're going to get clogs or you're going to miss patches. It's really you got to really stay right in your, your previous cut, that clear path with that, with that inside shoe. Uh, and even, even still, I miss spots and, I, and, and things. So, uh, but we're going to go through and get this all cut, get it drying out here in this beautiful sunny day. I think it turned out pretty well. That sickle bar can, can cut pretty quickly and it does a good job at uh, getting this hay down. So especially when it's shorter. But we got some nice, nice alfalfa here. The 
So even though the sickle bar can be kind of a pain to get set up and uh, you know when it gets clogged and misses streaks and stuff like that, it can be kind of a pain, but uh, this, this piece of machinery works pretty good. So, well that is it for cutting hay this year. This is the last cut that we're gonna do. Um, the back half of our uh, hay fields here is not ready to cut, so we just had about four and a half acres uh, that I cut today out here. Um, this will probably yield us about 100 bales. Um, you know, it's real short, but uh, real good hay. So if I were going to sell this, I would probably sell this for about $6 a bale delivered um, versus $5 a bale delivered, which is usually what I charge for uh, more of our grass hays and things like that. So, But uh, 70s model, Massey Ferguson, pretty good little piece of equipment. So. If you guys have questions, if you just got a sickle bar or you're looking at getting one or getting hay, uh, hay fields or moving out onto a place that has hay or, or, or any of those things, uh, let me know. Um, I've just gone through the last couple years all of the learning and, and uh, getting used to this whole operation. And so uh, a lot of the stuff is fresh in my mind and I've just learned a lot of things as well. So uh, hopefully I can help somebody out. So throw questions and comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. There will be another video on raking hay and another video on baling hay. I'm going to do this last cutting here. I'm going to videotape the whole process. So hopefully you guys will enjoy that. And uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.